Is God sending America a prophetic message that many are choosing to ignore? Are ancient harbingers of judgment happening here in the U.S. a sign of what's to come? Discover how you can recognize the prophetic omens of today that hold the secret for America's future. All this and more on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice. I'm Jonathan Burnus and I'm so glad that you've decided to join us today. Well, on today's show, we're going to continue a very thought-provoking discussion that we began last week. Before its destruction, Israel received warnings from God called harbingers, and our guest today believes that the very same warnings are happening right here in America, and that their appearance is going to have incredible ramifications for our nation if we don't listen. Joining me once again to further explore this fascinating topic is the author of The Harbinger, the ancient mystery that holds the secret of America's future. Please welcome back my good friend, Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. <laughs> welcome back, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. First book, 37 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Mm. One of the mm. best-selling books, not just Christian books, but mm. uh, you said it surpassed Stephen King and other mm. really well-known authors. This is amazing. Right this is a God thing. It's a God thing. Yeah, the Lord did it. The Lord died. I think most people that are watching the program are familiar with the harbinger, the ancient mystery that holds the secret of America's future. But for some that may not be, just give us a very quick okay. overview. Yeah, it is, it is in a nutshell, it is an ancient mystery that goes back to the last days of ancient Israel, a nation in danger of judgment that is given nine signs or nine harbingers of judgment. And the eerie thing is that these same nine harbingers are now appearing to America and are happening specifically, precisely, and the mystery is so precise that it, it gives exact dates and exact words that have to do with what is happening, what has happened, what is happening, and what will happen. So I wrote the book, as we shared last time, it happened really quick, really just, it was one of the easiest things, it was as if the book was already written. And you, the Lord told you to write it in f as, a, as fiction. I originally wrote it com completely, straight as a teaching, but then I was led to do it in that way. Once I did it like that with a prophet revealing it through these nine seals, once I did it that way, it just flowed, flowed as if nothing I've ever done before, as if the thing was written. And then I had to, then I had to say, what do I do with it? Because I never wrote a book. And so, so people told me, well, you got to, people don't know you, these publishers won't know you, so you got to make a name for yourself. And I said, I'm, I'm not doing that. And so, so what, so I'm on, I'm on my way that week that I finished, I'm on my way on a plane going down to Promise Keepers. I'm going to preach there or speak there. And I, it stops in Charlotte. That's where Sid rolled the start, but it starts at Charlotte Airport. And I am, I am there, I am praying. I bow my head and I said, Lord, so I said, the harbinger is your, this is your message, not mine. You get it out by your hand, not by the way of man, not by strategies of men. You get out your word. You know how to do that, your hand, and you do it. So I did that. I opened up my eyes. There's a man sitting to my left. The man sitting to my left turns to me and he says, what's, so what's the good word? And I said, uh, so I said, I, I thought he was kind of being kind of cute. I said, I said, well, I said, God loves you. I started witnessing to him. And he says, I know that. And he's, he's sort of witnessing. I mean, we're witnessing to each other. And, the, and, and the thing is that, and, and he says, and he, he's talking, and it's interesting because in the Harbinger, there's a scene where the, where the man sits down on the bench and there's another guy to his left who is this prophet, you know, who is this guy who has a gift, you know. And so, and so the man is holding an object and the man starts a conversation with him and then begins to speak prophetically about a message he's going to bring to the nation. So the guy speaks, he's talking, and all of a sudden he begins to speak prophetically to me. And he begins to say, you, you are going to publish a book. This is going to be a big thing. It's going to change your life. This is of God. It's going to change everything. And he goes through this whole thing and I'm writing it. I said, so, you know, I try to write it down here now. I've never met anybody like this on an airplane. No, I'm on no. an airplane more than I'm no, home. No, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't supposed to be on that flight. His flight kept getting get postponed until he was on my flight. And then, and then he sat down next to me at the moment I was praying. I mean, praying, and, and he said, the Lord told him, you have to speak to him. And, and he looked at me, and for some reason, he thought I looked Jewish. I so, have no idea why. So he, he said, no, Lord, I can't speak to him. He's going to kill me. He's orthodox, and I'm kind of I'm like this. I'm kind of like this, you know. So, so, he said, so, so he did, and it turned, out, it turned out that he just happened to be brought in touch with a publisher, with a Christian publisher. I didn't do anything. All, he sent word from the, after the airport. They called me, I didn't do anything, and said, we heard what happened with the Harbinger, and we want it, we're interested in publishing it. And that's how the Harbinger became a book, that's totally by the hand of God. Seven, eight, eight, now, 
Now 700,000. Yeah. Yeah, 700,000 copies 700, sold. Well, you've also uh, put this into a, an incredible uh, documentary, Isaiah 910 Judgment. What I want to focus on when mm -hmm. we come back, we have to mm -hmm. take a break, is what's happened mm -hmm. since mm -hmm. the book came out. Yes. Because a lot is going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. We're racing yes. forward in this. Yes. So uh, you don't want to go away. We'll be right back. At Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the true Messiah, to the Jew first and then to the nations. One way we do this is by locating and ministering to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world, people who often die from medical conditions that here in the West could be easily treated. We're just a few weeks away from our next medical outreach to help an impoverished Jewish community in Ethiopia. Our team of volunteer medical professionals will provide completely free medical care, medicines, dental care, eye care, and glasses to help these people, many of whom have never even seen a doctor or dentist. Even more important than the physical help we provide, our medical ministry opens the door for us to share the gospel, the good news of God's love. Will you help us to help these people in such desperate need? We urgently need help to raise the funds needed for this outreach. Every gift, large or small, will make a difference in someone's life. With your gift of $60 or more, we will send you Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's two DVD album, The Isaiah 910 Judgment. Is there an ancient mystery that foretells America's future? These powerful videos are a follow-up to his best-selling book, The Harbinger, and they explore such questions as, are there prophetic mysteries behind 9-11 and the crash of the stock market? Are there shocking parallels between events that happened in the United States and the events that happened when ancient Israel turned away from God? And is America in danger of God's impending judgment? Is there anything Americans can do to prevent their nation from falling just as ancient Israel did? As you watch the Isaiah 9:10 judgment, you'll discover answers to these questions and be better able to understand the events of today and what is coming tomorrow. In addition to this two DVD series, We'll also send you Jonathan Burness' newly expanded and updated release of his book, A Rabbi Looks at the Last Days. In this limited hardcover edition of the book, you'll discover biblical prophecies that are being fulfilled right now and what that means to you. Surprising insights drawn from both the Old and New Testaments that will challenge almost everything you thought you knew about the end times and how you can help to usher in God's kingdom. As you respond with your gift of $60 or more, you will not only receive these two powerful spiritual resources, but you'll also be providing life-saving medical help to needy Jewish people and introducing them to the good news that Yeshua is indeed their true Messiah. Please call, click, or write right now and be as generous as possible. Thank you. The key is, if a nation being warned by God does not turn back, then it will not just be one calamity, there will come more until judgment if it does not turn back to God. And that is what is going to come as foretold by the Harbingers. Welcome back. If you just tuned in, my guest today is Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn. We're talking about one of the most profound, amazing topics that we've ever talked about on this program, the harbinger, signs uh, that are coming to pass in America that parallel, listen to this now, parallel exactly, precisely the signs that were given to ancient Israel before they were destroyed and led into captivity. Let those that have an ear, let them hear. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, I wanna focus now on harbingers, mm -hmm. signs mm -hmm. that have been coming to pass mm -hmm since the book was written, because there's some very specific things that you, you shared mm -hmm. with me that mm -hmm. are coming to pass now. Mm -hmm. So let's begin with Harbinger's signs mm -hmm. that are coming to pass now since the book came out. Mm. Well, one of them we alluded to last time. And one of the, it's really the continuation of the harvest. Yeah, go we, back we, in, into detail on that. Okay, well that, well, that if you look, and you can do a word search in the Bible, and you'll find one of the signs of judgment that God gives again and again is the withering of trees and the, and, or the cutting down of the Erez tree, which is translated as cedar. And we shared about the seventh harbinger, which is the tree of hope, which is this Erez tree, which is supposed to be the tree of our hope, but without God. 
And what happens is, and I was just there a few weeks ago with some, some people praying, and we were shocked by what we saw. The tree of hope is withering away, withering as if it's cursed. I mean, even the land, I mean, even if there's some weeds, and even the weeds are cursed around it. Um, it's withering, its branches are broken off. You'll see a lot of scriptures about that. And it's, and everything around it is as dead, but the rest of everything else is alive. It's just this tree of hope. Like, this they, is the they, bigger and better This is the bigger and better planting. thing. We're coming back stronger, right. like America's coming back stronger. Well, look what, look what it's saying. And they, they can't save it right now. And it's literally being propped up on ropes, this tree of hope, on ropes. It is, branches are gone, the other branches are dying, it's cursed. I mean, th this is one of the harbingers there. Now, one of the things that, that are in the book is the mystery of the three witnesses. Right. Principle of, that. principle of judgment, that, that a matter of judgment is confirmed by two or three witnesses. And we saw with this, with the Harbinger, you've already seen two. We saw that, we saw the first one is Tom Daschle, which was with the first vowing of that vow linked to America the day after 9-11 Capitol Hill. First and if, you, if, if you're coming in new to this, you need to read the Harbinger so you understand these nine signs that have come to pass that parallel in exact detail the warnings given to ancient Israel and before. In here, word for word, and with the destroyed. DVD, they'll actually see it because we have clips of it. So, so it said it. That first witness, second witness, three years later, John Edwards repeats the same the same vow of judgment on America using the scriptures, using the scripture, not knowing what he's saying, and they don't know what they're saying yeah. on the anniversary of the, of 9/11. Third witness, but could there be a third witness? And the answer is yes. Who's the third witness? The third witness is the president of the United States, is Barack Obama. And what happens with him in his first major speech, he comes, now it's the second shaking of America. It is, we haven't get, you know, that's also in the harbinger, the collapse of the economy. And he goes to Capitol Hill, same place where the first one spoke and gave that word. And he gives a word about this and he says, he goes to the, the, the speech and he says, you know, I know the economy is falling, but there is something I want every American to know. And he says, his words are, and let me just make, make a note here. If you read any, all the commentaries on this, if you translated the, 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 the vow they made, cedars and stones, into our language, or our, it was simply this, we will rebuild and we're coming back stronger. That's the, that's, you see that in the commentaries. He gets up and he says, I want every American to know this, center of his speech, we will rebuild. The United States will come back stronger than before. Goes all around the world. Obama vows. That was we were the built. theme after 9/11 from was the very it. beginning, wasn't it? Yeah, and this is now. It's going all around the world, and the headlines. They all say Obama says we will rebuild. And if you were typing into the web that before the before that day, and you just typed in the words we will rebuild, it would have taken you on the first the first page. It would have taken you to Isaiah 9:10. But once the president spoke, his words replaced the ancient words yeah. all over the world. All, to this day, replaced it, the Americans were. So there, there you have that, and I just keep that in mind. Now, one of the, the, the things that have happened since focuses on the fourth harbinger, the tower. The tower is the one unfinished harbinger. It's still going up. In fact, it made news this year, because the big thing is the height, higher, higher. It made news that for since 9-11, the highest building in New York has been the Empire State Building. But everybody's been waiting for when is this gonna get to the to this spot. It made news all over the world. And it reached, it exceeded the, the Empire State Building and became, again, the highest building in, in New York. And the day it did was April 30th. That's when everybody focused on the thing again. April 30th is the date given in the Harbinger about the mystery of Ground Zero. On the same date given in the Harbinger, it becomes the highest building in New York. Now, now, the Har now there's something in the Harbinger that there's an ancient translation of the Bible called the Septuagint. And when they translate that vow of we will rebuild, you know, that with hewn stone, they do a strange thing. In the Greek, it says, instead of saying that, it says, the bricks have fallen, come let us build for ourselves a tower. Literally says a tower. So a tower is going up. And the words came from the Tower of Babel. They took it, the ancient translation took it from Genesis 11 because they saw that tower of defiance going up, up to the sky, same thing. Only two places in the Septuagint you find those words. And in the Harbinger, there's a disc, a seal that represents the Tower of Babel. Now, there was a, there was a scripture found, people don't know this, but in, most people don't, in Ground Zero, there was a scripture hidden there that was found. And I talk, uh, it, when, and when they were after, doing after, the cleanup? When they were cleaning the cleanup, but people didn't know. I spoke to the man, I discovered this after this. I spoke to him, he was one of the official photographers. He took a picture of something he saw. Never came out in the news. It, not much, I don't that think. I saw. And, and he went home, he, he looked at it and he started weeping. Because what was on there was a scripture. There was a Bible that was shattered, and one page was still there. One page on top. He took a picture. What was it? The, what the scripture was, come let us build for ourselves a tower. Wow. That was two places in the Bible. Tower of Babel, 
and Isaiah 9:10 in the Septuagint. I mean, my it was right there. But it continues because something happened this summer that when I heard about it, my wife told me, Renan told me, I, I didn't believe her, and I wrote the Harbinger, and I didn't believe it. And so I went down and checked out. <laughs> I didn't believe it, really. And so, so we, we have. Brazilian wives, though, right? Both of us <laughs> yes. have Brazilian wives. And remember the pattern of the vow in, in English is we will rebuild, we'll come back stronger. What happened is the President of the United States came down to ground zero, and he was brought in touch with the fourth, har the unfinished harbinger. They gave him a beam, which is going to be the final beam that's going to crown all the harbingers. It's going to be the final beam, the highest beam in America. And he, they said, put words on it. And he writes, we rebuild, we come back stronger. The highest, the paraphrase of Isaiah 9:10, the same thing he said that day. The highest words in America. He actually uh, wrote this on the he beam. He actually wrote it on the beam. I mean, it's gonna be the highest words in America. It's gonna be the vow. They all they began with that stone. It's gonna end with the actual words there on there. And in Hebrew, if you said this in Hebrew, the vow was eight Hebrew words. He said in the beginning, we remember, so he put eight English words paralleling the Hebrew words of Isaiah. Coincidence or God incidents? Uh, it's continuing. It's continuing. You tell me. It's not stopping. As long as America doesn't turn back, it's continuing. What's shocking to me is that on 9-11, there was a very, very brief repentance. People, th three weeks, people were going to church. People realized this is a sign. They turned to God. Three weeks later, not only status quo, but look at now, look, it's at, now. look yeah. at today, it's worse than it was then. Yeah, and what I would say the is, I mean, it, the word, the key is repentance. People came to say, God bless America, not America bless God. And if anything, we've grown, we've gotten far worse. Since then, we've tried to take under God out of, out of the pledge. We have clearly gone much redefining marriage. If America's course doesn't change, the harbingers will continue and the shakings of America will continue. Well, that, that's what I want to ask yeah. you when we come back. Yeah. Can we change course here? Or is it too late? We're going to find out when we come back. Don't go away. At Jewish Voice, we're dedicated to spreading the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the true Messiah, to the Jew first and then to the nations. One way we do this is by locating and ministering to some of the most impoverished and needy Jewish people in the world, people who often die from medical conditions that here in the West could be easily treated. We're just a few weeks away from our next medical outreach to help an impoverished Jewish community in Ethiopia. Our team of volunteer medical professionals will provide completely free medical care, medicines, dental care, eye care, and glasses to help these people, many of whom have never even seen a doctor or dentist. Even more important than the physical help we provide, our medical ministry opens the door for us to share the gospel, the good news of God's love. Will you help us to help these people in such desperate need? We urgently need help to raise the funds needed for this outreach. Every gift, large or small, will make a difference in someone's life. With your gift of $60 or more, we will send you Messianic Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's two DVD album, the Isaiah 910 Judgment. Is there an ancient mystery that foretells America's future? These powerful videos are a follow up to his best selling book, The Harbinger, and they explore such questions as Are there prophetic mysteries behind 9 11 and the crash of the stock market? Are there shocking parallels between events that happened in the United States and the events that happened when ancient Israel turned away from God? And is America in danger of God's impending judgment? Is there anything Americans can do to prevent their nation from falling just as ancient Israel did? As you watch the Isaiah 9:10 judgment, you'll discover answers to these questions and be better able to understand the events of today and what is coming tomorrow. In addition to this two DVD series, we'll also send you Jonathan Burness's newly expanded and updated release of his book, A Rabbi Looks at the Last Days. In this limited hardcover edition of the book, you'll discover biblical prophecies that are being fulfilled right now and what that means to you. Surprising insights drawn from both the Old and New Testaments that will challenge almost everything you thought you knew about the end times and how you can help to usher in God's kingdom. As you respond with your gift of $60 or more, you will not only receive these two powerful spiritual resources, but you'll also be providing life-saving medical help to needy Jewish people and introducing them to the good news that Yeshua is indeed their true Messiah. Please call, click, or write right now and be as generous as possible. Thank you.
Welcome back. My guest is Rabbi Jonathan Kahn talking about The Harbinger, best-selling book on the New York Times best-selling list for 37 weeks straight, and now a new DVD, The Isaiah 910 Judgment. It's the number one Christian DVD in America. And the question is, is it too late for America? Jonathan, is it too late? Do we just take a fatalistic approach? This is Bible prophecy unfolding and there's no hope we watch, mm -hmm. let it happen. Mm -hmm. it, the good news for us is the Lord is coming back soon, mm -hmm. sooner, or can we avert yeah. this judgment? Yeah, I think, I think if you look at the macro picture, the macro picture is that we don't see America clearly mentioned as the leader in the end times. That, that's, that, that we know, so that, that's not something we can do. But within, in from, the harbinger is kind of filling the gap between now and then. And so can there be revival? Yes. The, you know, people say there's gonna be judgment or revival. Um, and I answer there can be both. And sometimes revival only comes through judgment, just like we almost saw it after 9-11. But, no, but people weren't connecting. I mean, people in their hearts were, but they didn't want to say anything because people were afraid to say that. The harbinger is really putting it together, something, you know, so in, in that sense. So the, 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 the ultimate thing is there can be, I believe if there was no hope, there'd be no harbingers for us. There'd be no, what's the point of warning if, if there's no hope? And at the same time, I don't believe there would be a book called The Harbinger. What's the point of it going out? And, and God's doing this. We just want to And make, being so, received. And yeah. So, so well, yeah. 700,000 Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So now does it look, if we look at the, uh, we turn on the television, look at the way it's going, it doesn't look very hopeful at all. But there can be a double picture. There can be revival in the midst. There can be a culture going away and there still can be revival. And just to kind of bring that home, something from The Harbinger, we touched on last time, but just to kind of bring this, this home in that, is that there is this principle in the Bible with Israel that when the judgment came or the calamity came, it returned to the same ground where the nation was dedicated to God, the Temple Mount, where Solomon dedicated it and prayed for the future and all. And, and what would happen if they turn away? Well, it came back. So God saying, return, return to me. Well, could there be a parallel it's in America? The, by the way, that's one of the most profound things in the Harbinger, I think. It's bringing it home. The, it's the, bringing the it to the point. The place of dedication is the place of yeah, judgment. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and there, is this, there is a day that parallels this. The first day of America as a fully formed nation was the day Washington was sworn in. We had a president. All that. He gives a prophetic warning of what's going to happen if America ever turns away from God, which is happening now. And then the entire government goes on foot to a place appointed to pray for America's future. On the first day, this is the, the mystery ground. We can find out where that is. We have a mystery here. Where was it? It, it was the capital. It wasn't Washington, D.C. It right, was New York anyway. City. Where did they go? They dedicated, America was dedicated to God at ground zero. America's consecration ground is ground zero. In fact, in fact, even the... Even wow. the tower where it was built, it was actually owned by that church. It was all one ground, the ancient mystery coming true. And when that happened, a shockwave goes forth from ground zero, strikes another place. It strikes Federal Hall, the place where Washington gave the warning of what was going to happen. And it puts a crack in the foundation. And that, But all around ground zero, all the buildings are destroyed or ruined except one is protected. The one that's protected is the little stone chapel where they prayed to dedicate America to God. And the reason why it was protected, they said there was... There was an object that, that absorbed the force of 9-11. What was the object? The object was the harbinger. It was the sycamore. It was the sixth harbinger that actually saved the place. And which brings it home, the point of the harbingers isn't to condemn a nation. It is to save a nation. The point of the warning is to save a nation. And link this all back together is when Solomon dedicated that ground and he prayed, what's going to happen if they turn away? That's when God said to him, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and turn from their evil ways and, and seek my face, I will hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sin, I'll heal their land. The key is if my people. That was my final question. People that are watching in the audience, people at home, What's our response? What do we? What can we do? Our response is that that repentance begins with us. Revival begins with us. If we're not living in revival, we cannot expect America to live in revival. Revival is not going to come from Washington or come from Wall Street. It's going to come from us. And right. so we have to turn from our evil ways. We have to be the light. We have to be bold. We have to spread the light, the word. We have to get this word out. And because if we don't, no one will. If it doesn't begin with us, then who's going to begin with? We have to pray. We have to intercede. There are signs of it happening right now, but we have to be the lights we were called to be. If we were it wouldn't be like this. We have to be the lights. We have to be the people because the hope is Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus. There is no other hope. Yeshua means salvation. He is the hope. And, and without him, there's no hope. In him, there's all hope. We have to be stronger in him. We're in Jonathan, thank you so much. You. This, is, this is a wake-up call to America. And my friend, this is a wake-up call to you. You need to, the time is short. 
that that's 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 obvious and you need to get it right with God now. You need to get back into a very close relationship with God. Whatever's hindering you from that, you need to break free from it. And you really need to get these materials. The Isaiah 9, 10 judgment. God is looking to us to be the light. God is looking to us to stand in the gap. So you need to do your part. Get these materials. Time is short. It's not too late. He wants to use you. We'll be right back. Mm Coming this summer, July 13th through July 20th, join Jonathan Burness and his family on a spectacular Alaskan cruise. You'll experience teachings and praise and worship in some of the most breathtaking and rugged scenery in the world. This is a voyage you won't want to miss. Be sure to join us in beautiful Alaska. For over 45 years, our purpose as a ministry here at Jewish Voice has been to proclaim the gospel. We share with the Jew first, but we reach out to all people around the world. And in doing so, we've made it our mission to help Jewish communities in need. And we have been able to reach tens of thousands just this year with medical care, eye care, dental care, all free of charge, but most importantly, we share the gospel. And it's because of your financial support that we are making a difference in their lives. I I want you to know that anything that you can do today as the Lord leads you will make a difference in people's lives forever. Now, as our way of saying thank you, there's a few things I wanna send you. First of all, Jonathan Kahn's two DVD set, the Isaiah 9 10 Judgment. This is the number one Christian documentary, and God has given Jonathan amazing revelation that actually parallels the warnings that God gave to Israel before they were taken into captivity. And listen to me, the same warnings are being given to America in exact detail. Jonathan goes into this in great detail. It's one of the most amazing revelations I've ever heard, and I believe that you need to hear what God is saying through this man. By the way, uh, I just came out with a new book called A Rabbi Looks at the Last Days. It's actually uh, a complete rewrite of an older book that I wrote, but Again, this is a complete rewrite. It's like a new book, and I want to get a limited edition. We've done a limited hardcover version only for Jewish Voice, and I want to get that into your hands as well. Well, we're out of time once again, and until next week, I want to remind you, as I always do, closing the program, to fulfill your mandate to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. The Bible promises they shall prosper that love thee. So from all of us at Jewish Voice, this is Jonathan Bernis saying shalom and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 